time for a quick mea culpa. I screwed up and it was pointed out to me by uh, one of the kind fellas over on Patreon, our old buddy Drex. Um, when I was going on about putting capacitors in the, in the correct direction, especially electrolytics, because it's important, I was going on at length about this capacitor in particular, because that's what I'm showing you, and I screwed it up. I actually put it in backwards while I was in the middle of telling you not to put it in backwards. Fortunately, that capacitor is not as critical as this one to get the polarity correct. This one is right across the power bus. This one is is uh, in a low current uh, certain part of the circuit. And it's an easy fix. Let's put a bit of side, sidewards pressure on and melt the one solder pad and then move my sidewards pressure the other way. Go that way. And just third melt should pretty much have it I think no maybe one more mm -hmm. I could do this with wick or the solder sucker but I'm not gonna bother uh oh I've broken the pad okay it's gonna get a grab on it there it is out and I did break the pad oh well Oh, something more to fix. So I'll put it back in, this time with the negative in the correct orientation. Just melt the solder on the one pad that is still functional. To hold it in place mechanically, that's not enough. Get a little bit more in there. Okay, that's held in. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, looks like I get to show you how I did this one down here. Let me just find a piece of cutoff component lead. I'm going to flip the board over so that I can do this right-handed. So I'm going to just put uh, a bit of component lead in there and melt it on and grab my cutters cut this guy approximately to length use my pliers and nudge it down so it's in contact and get a little blob of solder in there add a little bit more on there a little more on there okay done It ain't pretty, but it's functional. You may be asking yourself why that capacitor didn't blow up. Because I was describing all kinds of dramatic stuff if your capacitor is a reverse polarity. It's this capacitor right here. Its negative side is 50k above ground. Its positive side is 1k above ground and then has a path to positive voltage through this transistor when this transistor is uh, conducting, which in our 50% duty cycle circuit is going to be 50% of the time. So the current flowing through that capacitor, even if it is essentially shorted to the power rail, 9 volts in this case, through the transistor, is going to be limited by this 50k resistor. If that wasn't there, this likely would have blown up and it may have drawn enough current while doing it to take the transistor out with it. Um, this one over here is much more likely to have gone kablooey if, uh, if I'd put it in backwards. Fortunately, I didn't and it was this one. So it was still capacitoring uh, like it's supposed to um, because there's a, a variable voltage passing through it. And uh, that resistor there was my lucky break. 
thank you once again to to my uh, eagle-eyed Patreon Drex for uh, pointing that out and for his support on Patreon. Um, if you guys feel like uh, seeing the videos early and throwing a buck or something in the tip jar, cruise on over there. You also get to be early and tell me where I screwed up. That may be of value to you. Thanks, bye.